next Saturday. So all those that have been participating in the food pantry or any that would like to participate in that food pantry, uh, we got on there. We need your help, and we really do. So if you will, uh, be here next Saturday morning. Wednesday night, which is the 14th, there will be uh, our first choir practice. For, <laughs> I can't get that out. First choir practice for the year. Uh, Sister Gail Peavy is called the practice, and so she's uh, asking if everyone please plan to attend. It's at 6 o'clock, and I think that's a little bit of a change, so be aware of that and try to support Gail in um, choir practice Wednesday night. Next Sunday afternoon, the 18th, all priesthood are asked to be here at the church at 2 o'clock. I hope that fits into your schedule. Uh, this will be our first priesthood meeting for the year, so we're asking that all priesthood be here at 2 o'clock next Sunday. The following Sunday, the 25th, we've over there also, will be our first business meeting of the year. We have several things we want to accomplish. One would be approving our budget, and also we have uh, hopefully our Balfour man and our insurance adjuster, Mike Edwards, will be here. We hope to share with you some facts and figures, uh, some drawings and some other things. Uh, we hope to approve the project that we are involved, been involved in for several months now. Uh, I shared with the congregation last week and I hope that that will still hold true at least as of a couple of days ago it was. Belfar has assured me that they will begin construction on our roof before the end of the month. Uh, they've just got some final figures that they're putting together, but um, they will start on that. So hopefully uh, if you come by, you'll see some, some construction uh, going on on our sanctuary before the, uh, we turn the, uh, the month over. Also, um, on a good note, uh, we've asked about uh, Sister Sandra Johnson. Uh, you know, she's had surgery. Uh, she's in Houston, Texas had a little heart problem, had a kidney problem. Uh, from what I understand, they, did the, they were going to do the surgery last Wednesday. They postponed it till Friday. They did the surgery Friday, which was a replacement of, I think, of a valve, heart valve. And so uh, from what we have understood, that she came through the surgery very well. Uh, in fact, uh, the last email or text that we got said that... Um, they had taken the pacemaker that they had to, you know, that's part of that surgery, I think, is putting a pacemaker in and getting your heart regulated in the valve and all those kind of things. And they were able to take the pacemaker off. So she's, uh, she's doing as well as can be expected at this point. Still re need to remember her in our prayers and her family, but they seem to be very positive about the results and um, what's going to happen with her in the next few weeks and months and so forth. So please remember Sandra and that if anyone has any further updates so you can share that with us uh, when, we, uh, when you can. Also um, our new brand new women's leader Sister Johnette Miller has asked me to share that there will be a women's meeting on January the 31st at 10 o'clock that is a Saturday. So any of you ladies at work, that will not interfere with you. Uh, so please mark that on, mark that on your calendar. We'll probably try to have a note uh, in our bulletin next uh, Sunday to remind you of that. So 10 o'clock, January the 31st, here in the church in the ladies' parlor, right, uh, John Epp? So be aware of that. And I know many of you know Sister Ramona Johnson. Uh, from the campgrounds, fixture at the campgrounds, cooked for years and years and years and years. Uh, Sister Ramona passed away. I don't know if it was Friday or Thursday. It was one day. Does anyone know for sure? Did not, did, I, we got a text. Uh, no, we didn't. You read it on Facebook, didn't you, Marty? About Ramona, yeah, Facebook. Uh, you know the world in social media right now. Uh, but I, we did we did that I think Friday, and I'm not sure if she, it was early Friday morning or Thursday or. But Ramona um, passed away. In fact, Al Star has gone up there this morning uh, to Montgomery uh, for her wake and 
so forth. But just want to pass that along to you. I know many of you have sit under her kitchen ministry and her cooking and ate a lot of her cooking. And Ramona was a very special person. Uh, in fact, I don't know if the campgrounds could have ever run if it hadn't been for Ramona Johnson and what she did for our, the church and the campgrounds. So uh, please remember them and your prayers uh, and be aware of that. Are there any other announcements before I share in birthdays here? Okay, we will move into that. Uh, we have our, our canvas star, uh, Larry. He is. <laughs> Whatever uh, that he has, I wish I could bottle it up because I would drink. I, I would drink it. I, I just drink it every day. <laughs> so, but he is. He's an amazing person, and we 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 think a lot of him. Uh, all right. Um, I have been putting off for three weeks now, Addison. Your birthday. In fact, we thought we were just going to have to wait till you turn nine. To, but if you will, come stand right here in front of us. Addison has uh, got a year older. She has turned eight years old. And what do we know eight years old as? The age of accountability. Now, Addison, I don't know if you know what that means yet or not. But I can tell you, I'll tell you in one word, well, in a few words, don't mess up. Don't mess up. But we'd like to sing to her. She's looked forward to this. And, um, and we also want to mention, uh, but we're going to sing to Addison first, and then, but uh, also uh, Linda Bracewell, Brother Joe's wife, is sharing her birthday here this week. And, but we will. Let's sing, if we can, to Addison and remember all those that are sharing their birthdays this week. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Addison. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Addison. <laughs> we finally got to sing your happy birthday, and I am so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you so very much for being here this morning. Um, one of the things that we look forward to and sharing is those children sharing with us this morning. And I look forward to this worship service, and I know each one of you do also. Thank you so much. We're going to move straight from the prelude to our worship events of this morning. And it's going to take some uh, involvement on your part, particularly at the beginning. We're going to have a little practice to kick things off because we're going to sing some hymns perhaps we're not terribly familiar with, so uh, good for us. I want to, however, fill in a few blanks for you. We have, uh, helping with the invocation this morning, Cherie Humphreys. We also have uh, Beth Johnston. Oh, she's already listed. Good. And we have Ashley Griffin with our Disciples' Generous Response. So uh, make sure and uh, support them in your uh, prayerful meditations this morning. Uh, also want to just kind of outline the, the end of the service, uh, just so we're square. On the benediction, we'll say that. I'll say that. And then uh, afterward, there'll be a, just a meditative musical response where we just stand in our places to uh, meditate for a little bit. And then after that uh, phrasing of music, then Sheila will have a recessional where then we can mill around and do our uh, good visiting that we do. Uh, first thing I want you to do is uh, stand, please, as much as you are able and willing. Just stand and uh, stretch. I want you to stretch because if we're going to do choir practice, we have got to uh, get ready to have all our muscles moving at one time. Just, uh, you know, the person next to you, grab their shoulders and massage them a little bit. 
or turn your back so that they'll do it to you. <laughs> oh, that's good. Okay, be seated. Uh, let's turn to hymn 83. Now, the, remember, this is just practice. This isn't real. This isn't the real thing yet. So that means we can uh, stumble a little bit. Now, I think we. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know that we've sang this or sung this hymn, but I think we know the tune. Uh, I'm asking Sheila just to go through the tune, say uh, a couple of lines. Yeah, just the last two lines, just to listen. Okay, that and I don't know if we that, that was old that was hymn two eighty seven in the in the Burgundy hymnal, Holy Spirit come with fire or come with power, and I suspect we have it also in this hymnal, but these will be different words. So I presume we're I want to assume we're all reasonably familiar with that tune. So that's the practice on that one. Uh, six thirty five. Let's go over six hymn six thirty five, which uh, is certainly new to me anyway, but I think we'll catch on fairly easily. I'm going to ask um, Sheila to play through the whole song and then we will sing just the first stanza and, and have practice, okay? Just the first stanza after Sheila plays it all the way through. stanza only. Arise, your light is come, the Spirit's call obey. Show forth the glory of your God, which shines on you today. Thank you very much. That sounds very good, and I think uh, it's a fairly, uh, we're fairly familiar with that tune. And so I'd call that one good. I'd call us good on that. Hymn 497. Let's try that one. Again, uh, if you would, Sheila, go through the whole song, and we'll sing the first stanza. And depending on how good we do, that may be it, or we may try the second one while we're at it. it is uh, uh, yeah, uh, probably the most different tune we'll deal with today. Uh, play it through a whole nother time and then we'll sing after that second time through.
Thank you very much. I thought that was very good and uh, it seemed like we were picking up some confidence as we went along. And finally, the last one, 631, let's uh, again hear that all the way through and then we'll sing the first stanza and see how it goes after that, 631. Thank you so much. That is one, I believe, in our previous hymnal, but uh, from my experience anyway, we didn't sing it just a whole lot. Let us now begin our worship and sing with intent and fully practiced uh, hymn 83, and we will then continue with our service. Hymn 83. Teach this to your children, that all people everywhere must repent, or they can in no wise inherit the kingdom of heaven. For man of holiness is God's name, and the name of his only begotten Son of man is even Jesus Christ. Therefore I, God, give you the commandment to teach these things freely to your children. 
saying that inasmuch as you were born into the world by water and blood and the Spirit, even so you must be born again into the kingdom of heaven of water and of the Spirit, and be cleansed by blood, even the blood of my only begotten, that you may be sanctified from all sin and enjoy the words of eternal life in this world and the eternal life in the world to come. For by the water you keep the commandment, by the Spirit you are justified, and by the blood you are sanctified. Amen. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing all of us to be here today and arriving safely to worship together. Be with each one of us as Brother Cliff shares your word and inspires us all to go out and betray God's work in everything we do. Bless us too in our own lives and watch over us in our daily tasks as we take on our own personal and family endeavors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, Wayne, if I could get you while I'm introducing this to move the microphone over to this side on the rostrum. Uh, it occurred to me that with some of our children, they may not be quite so tall as the rest of us, and we want to see them. Uh, could you move the microphone up just up here on the rostrum? I, uh, as you see from the title of the, or from the front of your bulletin, our theme today is of water and spirit, which to us, uh, who have been in this faith community for some time think largely of baptism, our sacrament of committing to God, of being born again. And part of that involves a testimony of the Lord Jesus in uh, his work in our lives. And I've asked uh, for the perspective of our youth this morning to share with us an answer to the question, how have they seen God at work? And it could be in their own lives, or in their families' lives, lives of others, or in the larger world. So if I could get all our youth who have uh, signed up or agreed to, to uh, share, come on up. Addison, Marina, and Noah, and he's bringing Leah with them. And Ashley is already uh, with us up here. I'm going to kind of go in order of age from youngest to oldest. And uh, I don't really know, who is the youngest up here? You're eight. How old are you, Noah? Eleven. Eleven. How old is Leah? Uh, she's three, but... Probably. She'll just go with me. Okay. She, so that makes you 14. Eleven plus three. Okay. <laughs> then, uh, and Marina, you, how old are you? I am nine and a half. Nine and a half. So it look, looks like Addison is 
first. Addison, how have you seen God at work? Tell, go ahead and speak, speak into the microphone. The day we got out of school for Christmas break, my friends and I got together to make blessing bags. We put, we put together bags with soup, with soap, toothbrushes, water, and snacks to keep in our cars for when we see some, someone standing on the side of the road, we can sh share the blessing, the blessings with them. I really enjoyed doing this and it made, made me feel really good to do this for other people. Thank you, Edison. Yeah, we're good. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Marina. On Friday, I really saw God at work. My best friend Hannah inspired me Friday to help a classmate or any person when they are crying and upset. We went to the gym Friday at school. A third grader named Hannah also was very sad. She didn't know how to turn the long jump rope. Hannah went over and talked to her. Here's one of the things she said. She said, nobody is perfect. That made me feel good inside. Hearing that, God said that don't feel sad about the way you do things and the way you look. Be your own self. Marvelous. Thank you. Noah and Leah. <laughs> so the time I saw God at work was when my mom, um, these little two girls were giving my mom a very, very hard time. And um, all of a sudden, they decided to help mommy by um, actually trying to learn to get potty trained and um, just saying, mom, you can't do everything right. So um, they, so Callie started being good at potty trained and Leia started being bad at potty trained just to show how much um, they loved her, so. That's sweet. And Ashley, I'll let you take this microphone. My testimony is a little bit longer than theirs. Um, I saw God's working in both my life and the life of a friend of mine. Uh, most of you know we have Solid Rock here at this church. And a while ago, this was when Solid Rock first started up, uh, one of my friends who came here, she's actually my best friend, and she's actually back at my house right now. <laughs> um, in the middle of, the, of, the, of Solid Rock, she got a text message from the parent of one of her friends, and it uh, it told her that the, that friend had passed away, and by uh, by suicide. And um, Colleen, or that's her name. Uh, she asked me to come into the restroom with her, and uh, while while in there, she told me what happened, and it was one of those moments where. You didn't know what to do, but but all you could do was you you couldn't do it yourself. You had to rely on a greater being. And in that moment, I felt God's presence, and uh, I grabbed her in my arms. We had another friend in there who wrapped her arms around her, and um, we began to pray for her and also for the family who had witnessed this and. It was one of those prayers where I didn't have to think about the words that were coming to me because God had given me the words. And uh, now I know that she's really thankful for what I had said that night because uh, she was able to stick with us for the rest of the solid rock and really enjoy it and not have to worry as much as she had before because she knew that uh, there is a God and that he was watching out for us. And that's my that's how I have seen him work in my life and the lives of others. Hold on a second. Uh, you're at that song, you tell me about that. Oh, also, I don't know if you have noticed, uh, looks like a few of them might have fallen, but there are pictures hanging up in the on the little I don't know what trellises. trellises. Um, and last night we had solid rock and it was really fun and I invited everyone to draw on the table and don't judge, but not as many people are artistic, but I think they're beautiful. <laughs> and it shows, 
It, we really had a great time last night. We played a lot of games. We had an interesting video and very good discussion. It was very fun. You may all return to your seats. Thank you very much. Yes, thanks each one of you. <laughs> Marvelous things. Marvelous things uh, at work. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with humbleness and adoration. We thank you for all the gifts that you give us, including life itself. We know that all good and perfect things come from you, and we ask forgiveness for our thoughts and shortcomings. We strive for peace, joy, and love, but are tested by the evils of the world. Most recently, the attack in Paris, killing innocent people and destroying families. They grieve for the loss of their loved ones. We pray that your sweet spirit will envelop them and bring peace and healing to their broken hearts. Bless all that are gathered here, that we may have peace and love in our hearts. When turmoil has changed our world, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. We may not have the large numbers of children that we would like to have, but we certainly have the quality. We certainly have some beautiful children that express for us very meaningful, heartfelt things and bless us with their presence and their willingness to serve so so openly and so freely and if I might add to that what a what a blessing we have in this guy right here <laughs> yeah he's gonna be modest but I mean the, the way he orchestrated this and talked to those children prior to our coming out made even me feel comfortable and they were just eager to serve and eager to be a part of this service and Tim just did it just as naturally as he possibly could do it. 
Of course, we all know he's a natural kind of guy. So, well, listen, we, we're talking about baptisms today, the uh, baptism of by water and by the Spirit. And that's a probably a subject that has been approached many many times I remember back in the old days when we used to have baptisms on a on a regular basis we would ask some of the uh, Mel uh, some of the uh, ironic priesthood to bring messages or words of uh, explanation and meaning to the to the service of baptism and I had the privilege of doing a couple of those and uh, I remember especially my own daughters and son having baptized them and and uh, the thoughts and the words and all that went into appreciating the event of the hour. We're all pretty familiar with that, with the mechanics of it, but uh, we know that when you submit to baptism that you're going to get wet. We know that. And somebody's going to put a sheet around us as we come up out of that water. And, and we're going to be greeted by the saints when we stand up front with our wet hair. We know that, <clears throat> we know that pretty well, as having experienced that a number of times in our lives. And we know, too, that the uh, spiritual aspect of the baptisms has a very meaningful impact. It gives instructions to the one who has been baptized. It gives uh, direction in their lives. It gives a sense of God's presence being with them. It gives them the uh, it gives them the sense of belonging to a group of people who gather in Christ's name in Christ's church and seek God's and Christ's ways implemented in our lives that's a powerful powerful thing for some people those things happen immediately for some people those things happen over a period of time uh, I know for myself I remember having to be ha being expected to have this mountaintop experience when I was baptized in in this church prior to the fire we say before the fire and uh, as I went out front to be greeted and congratulated and kind words from everybody in the congregation uh, I believe it was Raymond Booker's sister came to me and says with wide expectant eyes and said well what did you feel or, or words to that effect and I, you know, I, I'm thinking real quickly, I'm thinking, you know, I don't want to dis disappoint this lady. I don't want her to think that as, as much as she might think of me that I didn't have some mountaintop experience. When in fact I didn't, I felt loved and I felt close to God and I felt close to the people. And to me, that was a tremendous accomplishment. And it wasn't just brought on by the baptism, it was it was brought on earlier by the people in the church nurturing me along. But I said, oh, and answered her to her question. I said, it was wonderful. I didn't lie. It was wonderful. But I didn't want to disappoint her. The point I'm making here is we don't all have those mountaintop experiences right at that moment. We have them as time goes on. We find God living in with us and through us and speaking through us and to us and the the blessing that it is to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit and I'm not trying to suggest here that I'm this guy that walks six inches off the floor we we have all felt God's spirit and it's 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 wonderful as I told Raymond's sister it's wonderful it is wonderful. It's a blessing. Oh. The first baptism is a willingness indeed 
Indeed, a demonstration to witness of that willingness to commit our lives to God as we grow through each phase of our lives. We do grow. We, we find ourselves where we are today, or if we're referring back to an earlier time in our lives, we see ourselves as being that person at that time in our life and being feeling as though that's all there is, maybe. I mean, it's so wonderful that that's what it is. But at each phase of our life where we grow, we grow in understanding, we grow in appreciation, we grow in love, we grow in obedience, we have that new and revived feeling that it's wonderful, that it's God in his spirit working in our lives. Maybe not in mountaintop ways like some people expect God's presence to be a mountaintop experience. Indeed it can be. Indeed it is many times. But most of the time it's that still small voice speaking to us because we have made the baptisms a part of our lives and express our commitment to God's purposes in the living of our lives. And so we find ourselves being blessed as we grow through the stages of life. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. Right when we think we've learned it all, we get knocked down sometimes and we learn a little bit more from being knocked down. I've seen changes in our church. You all have seen changes in our church where we have grown in our understanding where we have grown in our acceptance of things that perhaps a few, a few short years ago we would not have embraced so, so eagerly. Now, it may have taken some other good people, well-meaning and good people, reach that phase in their life where they learned and grew and understand and concluded on a certain level and then they pass away and then the new generation comes in with new enlightenment with new understanding with a new appreciation or I should say a renewed appreciation and we have ourselves being thankful once again and growing into that phase of our life where those baptisms that we have had and continue to have the benefit of take their effect in our lives it's not just an incidental act, this baptism, this first baptism, that, that shows, uh, part of, shows ourselves as being part of, an, of a ceremony. It's a, it's a sign of public sign of commitment that we express to our fellow church brothers and sisters as well as Almighty God. It's a sign. It's a step in that phase of the growing of our lives. The second baptism is a spiritual baptism involving the laying on of hands. It's a connecting procedure. Connecting oneself to our Heavenly Father by way of His Spirit. That connection that we have is not just a one-time event where we plug it in and get a little juice and we unplug it. That connection is there when we need it to be, when we want it to be. And God calls us continually. He wants us to continually be a part of his family, a part of his uh, listening group, a part of those that are connected to him and receive that wisdom from him. You know, another thing I like about Tim, you know, we never quit learning from each other. He demonstrated the, you know, the exercises. I've had this problem with people falling asleep, you know, during my sermons. <laughs> and this might be the answer to that. You know, if we could stand up two or three times during the course of my sermons, then we, we'd be a little more revitalized and more likely to hear then these profound words seriously God blesses us every day 
God blesses us every minute. The baptisms are what has made us God's children. That and our belief and our faith and our trust. A number of things culminating in baptism perhaps and, can, and proceeding through the living of our lives. And these little children who are approaching that age of baptism. Did you hear me little girl? Okay. Their, their lives and their minds and their little hearts are so full of love and goodness and everything is wonderful. Everything is precious, especially to grandparents, especially to mamas and daddies. But you know, we all wish that in some ways we could remain that like these little children. We do because life is so beautiful and so pure and so wonderful and we don't have to we don't have to make out like it's just wonderful because it is wonderful we've been there we most of us have had very fortunate lives as we were that age and we grew and we became what we are today but there are forces in this world who that would have us be otherwise and it's so, uh, it's so fortunate that we're aware of those and that we are aware of ways to combat those negative influences that we have to deal with in the course of the phases of our lives. I'm going to read to you a scripture from the first chapter of Mark. Uh, if I haven't lost my place this is when Jesus was baptized he was baptized by a guy who lived on locusts he lived out in the woods with the animals. And he didn't have a lot of prestige among the hierarchy of the religious leaders of the day. He probably was wrapped up in animal skins to keep warm. He was a humble individual who God, through all his deficiencies, chose to declare the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, he baptized Jesus. Came out of, let's imagine, if you will, he probably lived in some kind of a shelter, perhaps a cave. Came out of that shelter and baptized the Son of Almighty God. And this is where the scripture picks up. <clears throat> After the baptism, at once the Spirit sent him out into the desert. And he was in the desert 40 days being tempted by Satan. He was with wild animals and angels attended him. Get that picture. Here's this man who came out of his, out of his cave probably finished a nice lunch of locusts declared the presence of almighty God's son Jesus Christ and was attended by angels what a holy occasion one which some may not expect we would expect such an honor and a privilege to declare the the coming of the Lord to be adorned with all the regalia and all the formality that one could imagine. But yet it came from a, a guy who eats locusts. A humble guy. One who was sure in his heart and in his mind that this was the Christ. Forty days he was tempted. 
Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, after his baptism, do you think at some point in his temptation for 40 days and 40 nights that he might have dreamt back to the time when he was a child, when life was wonderful and beautiful, when life was precious and everybody smiled and everybody had your your goodness and your wellness at mind and at heart. You think maybe he might have done that? I don't know. I think I would be if I was being tempted by evil, pure, unadulterated evil. I think I would be. I would seek comfort in any way I could. I think most of us would. Don't we all seek comfort when we're being tempted? Maybe it's not after 40 days and 40 nights of being tempted. But also remember, he was attended by the angels. He withstood the temptations. And we could enumerate the temptations. But I doubt any of us here have had those, that degree of temptation in our lives. But we've had our temptations. But like Jesus, we also have that phase of holiness, that life of holiness and goodness and the power of baptism to bring our minds into the reality of God loves us. This evil is trying to distract us from that love, trying to bring us off the track where we have found this comfort where we have found life as being a blessing, trying to break us away from that. We've felt that in some degree or another, every one of us, and if you haven't, hang on to your seats because you will. It's just what life's about. But we all have the knowledge. We all have the belief which makes us children of God that he loves us and that Neither, neither life, nor death, nor principalities, nor evil, nor on and on can separate us from the love of God. We have that assurance. And because we're believers, we are insulated, if you will, to some degree from the temptations that would beset us and throw us off track. John Sebastian, in his sermon, I think it was last week, referred to the book of Ephesians. And if you haven't read that book of Ephesians, and the Bible's very short, the first chapter is very short, I highly recommend it as I have done before, and you will probably hear me say that again, because in that chapter it tells us that we are God's children, that we were created in spirit at the creation of the earth, of the creation of everything, our spirits were created by God. And that he knows us as his children. And that we have specific things to do in serving God. Because we are his children. We could go out and throw a party with that, couldn't we? But if we did, that would be the temptation. That would be the devil trying to get his foot in the door. Now, we can still party and be reverently, have it reverently done. And we do that. We celebrate life today. We celebrate life as God's children every communion Sunday that we have. But sometimes I think that we can lose sight, so easily lose sight because of the distractions of the evil one that we are God's children, that we were created with the foundation of the earth for his purposes and that he loves us and that he, and these are the words from the scripture, he has sealed us his, sealed us his because we believe. And when we believe, we have the comfort of this precious little girl. We might have to think about it just a little bit harder. We might have to focus on it. But isn't that what we are come together this morning to do? To sing and praise God and hear the word of God and be strengthened 
because we believe to have our faith become stronger and stronger so that the power of ugliness and evil has less and less and less of an effect on us. But never drop your guard because Satan doesn't. And you don't have to worry about God keeping your guard up and his guard up because he has sealed us his. Now we can take that power of having being sealed his and go out into the world or into the congregation or into our neighborhood and represent God in a way that's attractive to others and trust that the Lord is blessing those with whom we are working for has blessed their lives and spoken to them by way of his spirit that they might respond to some simple un complicated effort on our part to share God's love. I mentioned earlier that we don't have a lot of children, but we have quality children. You want a lot of children? You got the power. You're God's children. He wants children to be in his fold. He wants children to have their faith nurtured. And their beautiful spirits brought before us to remind us of the sweetness of youth and of love and goodness. He wants that. And we've got the power. What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? And I'm speaking to Cliff. I'm not just speaking here as one looking down and condescending upon anyone here or anyone anywhere. Because I have my struggles and I don't always win them right away. I win them ultimately because God is with me. I'm God's child. You are God's child. You have been sealed as such. And have the power of his Holy Spirit with you. To bring about his purposes in you. Read that book of Ephesians. It just lights me, sets me floating when I read that book. One short chapter, chapter number one. And you probably won't read the rest of it because you'll be so lifted and so blessed. Thank you. This reading is from the Doctrine and Covenants uh, 162.7a. There are many lives waiting to hear the redeeming words of the gospel or to be lifted from the hopelessness by the hands of loving servants, but they will be lost to you without the generous response of disciples who share from their own bounty that others may know the joys of the kingdom. Be generous. God gifts each person with boundless grace and undenying love. Our response to that love and grace is to serve others and let generosity become part of our nature. Share joyfully. Tithing is a gift of thanksgiving to God in response to God's generous gifts to us. When we share our tithes, the church can spread joy, hope, love, and peace around the world so others can experience God's generosity too. Will the ushers please come forward?
Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you for this day that you have blessed us with, and thank you for your undenying and un unstopping uh, generosity. And may we have the ability to share this generosity with those who aren't as gifted as we are today. May uh, each of these tithings go to their rightful homes and to be used to their best ability. Amen. Dear saints, you have been called with a great calling today through the calling of testimony that indeed God is at work uh, through the calling of recognizing the power and effectiveness of the sacraments to connectedness with your God and your creator 
to engaging in that connectedness for the first time, if not already, and to dwelling in that connectedness and reflecting and meditating for those who have already made that initial commitment. Lord, take our worship now and bless it. Bless it to our nourishment, to our spiritual nourishment and the nourishment of our community. Help us to reflect on the words that have been given, whether through the inspiration of our speaker, the inspiration of those who bore testimony, the reading of the scripture, and the calling to reflect upon the words of inspiration of those in times past. Thank you, O oh God, for this great gift you have given us of music and of testimony and of sharing. We pray that you would move us out now and help us to reach out to those who need our hug, as Ashley had talked about in hugging her friend, to those who need the good word, to those who need the challenge or the call. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.